there is a war going on and the enemy we're fighting is invisible but is there a way to know if we're coming under attack by demonic forces find out next on words to inspire you restoration christian ministries presents words to inspire you a time for sharing the things that will bring encouragement to your hearts and enlightenment to your minds inspirational words to keep you focused on the things of the kingdom of god and his christ join us now and enjoy words to inspire you with your host pastor john baysmore hello everyone this is pastor b and i welcome you again to words to inspire you well just glad again to have this opportunity a week has passed but now we're here before you again to share the things that the Lord has given me to share with you. Last week, we started talking about demonic warfare, spiritual warfare, warfare in the heavens, and uh, the things that happened there, what the Word of God says about it. We were talking about, uh, I believe it was Ephesians 6 and 12, where it tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in the heavens so what i want to do this week i want to talk about the signs that we can see when a believer uh is going back into bondage god has delivered them sometimes they've been saved for years and years and sometimes it's been months but there are specific signs that we can see when a believer uh, is beginning to go back into bondage and it's really incumbent upon us to make sure when we see these things that we address it. Now, many times people don't address it because they say, well, it's not my business. You know, um, I can't be judging people. It's, this is not a matter of judging. This is a matter of helping people that you see uh, that are beginning to go astray. The Bible says in meekness, instructing, instructing those that oppose themselves if God, peradventure, would give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, who are taken captive by the devil at his will. So now, there is a way that we are to approach our believers when we see them uh, going into error, we see them going, falling back into sin, falling back into bondage. And there are certain behaviors, behavior things that we can see, uh, that we can know that they are beginning to slip back to where they came from the first one there are seven different things and i'm going to start with number one and this it usually works out this way and you you will see this it usually will work in this particular pattern the first one is uh, regression now regression is really a behavior change this is uh somebody that has been saved like i said they've been saved for months or years or whatever and then all of a sudden they start cursing again <laughs> just out of, out of the clear blue sky they'll start cursing and here's the thing they're okay with it they're uh, smoking again they're drinking again uh they're partying again they're just doing the things that uh the behaviors that they had once given up on now once you see this you can see that they're starting to regress uh they're starting to, to go back into the things that they were doing again now it's really at this point well i think it's real really important to really address it then because now they're at the place where they're not really in bondage but you can see that they're tripping they're slipping they're starting to fall back they're starting to make excuses for behavior it's at this point that they're really uh, they're really still able to be reached and i think it's really important that we try to to really get them then because now they're they're still in their right mind there's they're still able to receive a word from you and most of the time they're going to say fine but now if they are not listening at that at that point the second of uh, the second phase that you will see them fall into now we said that first one is regression well the second would be repression at this stage they are really trying to repress their praise they're repressing their uh, worship they're repressing uh, any joy that they have you know they they really don't want to go to church anymore they don't read their bible anymore and um and they just they're starting to feel as though you know this is this is not really um not really something that i have to do they will make excuses uh for their behavior they even get to the point where you know they they just feel like it's not even necessary to go to church now this is repression so again the first one would be um what was it uh regression then repression 
and so the, and it normally goes this way and I'm saying this because this is really spiritual warfare and we really need to know particularly you pastors you know and even you parents you know you might have teenagers or even children that are adults that have given their life to the Lord you will start seeing certain little behaviors now they're, they're very almost unnoticeable at times now of course if they're you know smoking and drinking and you can see it that's one thing but most of the time they're not going to do these things in front of you now the repression you know when they start uh, finding excuses not to go to church they start finding excuses not to read their bible they don't have the joy that they once had they don't want to praise you know they don't want to really uh, give God the glory they don't feel those things are necessary they're, they're starting to repress their praise and they're starting to uh, repress uh, their their joy and their um, their liveliness in the Lord now th these are signs that they're really starting to fall back uh, into bondage now again I think it's important that we don't just take this as step one step two step but we really look at this as behavior that's been proven yeah let me tell you something when you when you, when you talk about things like this, normally you can talk about it so eloquently, it's because you have gone through it. I have actually seen firsthand this behavior happen. And, and here's the problem. Most of the times parents or friends or family members or coworkers, you know, that may be believers and, you know, have a relationship with people that are going through this, they don't want to say anything because they feel as though they're going to take it the wrong way or they feel as though their children might get angry with it. Listen. I don't care about that. I care more about their soul, about them falling back into bondage, because here's the thing. You know, when it gets to a certain level, they're almost unreachable. So it's it's really important that we reach them at these levels. Now, we said regression and repression. The, sir, the third one is suppression. Now, this is really when it starts getting serious because they don't really talk about Jesus anymore. So they're getting to the point now where they don't really uh, talk about their relationship with the Lord. They might say they have a relationship with God, but they won't mention Jesus anymore. They'll say, I have a relationship with God, you know, um, but it's not, it's not really important to say Jesus. So they start repressing the name of Jesus. They start repressing their testimony. They don't want to let anybody know you know that they're um that they are believers and, and here's another thing they start complaining they start criticizing and then they start blaming god for things that he's not even responsible for why did god let this happen i mean if god really loved me or if god really loved them he wouldn't have allowed this to happen so now they start to get in this critical stage and this is how you know that there are demons uh, really that's harassing them and i want you to understand something i know you don't see them but there are demonic influences all around us every single day. There are uh, some of the things that we are saying that I have this, what would you really have? You know, like I have a headache or I have a migraine or my knee is bothering me or, you know, uh, many times these are demonic spirits that are harassing you, that are trying to make you believe that these are just physical things that's going on in your body, but it's not. These are demonic influences that are that are beginning to to take root in you. Now, when you go from regression and then and you just think about it, you know, your your behavior starts to change and then repression you start you start not wanting to go to church anymore. You start not wanting to give God praise anymore. I mean, these these are things that are real and then suppression, you stop talking about Jesus. You, you completely stop talking about Jesus, then you start criticizing and complaining and finding excuses. Now, normally when, when the behavior doesn't stop there, if you have actually tried to reach someone, but they are determined that they don't want to listen to you, the next stage is really when it starts getting serious. Depression. Now, depression, and I wrote, I wrote notes down, is complete hopelessness and I wanted I wanted to write this down because I, I really didn't want to just to come and start just saying things but I really wanted to, to be able to verbalize what I have seen in an intelligent way but in a way that you can also understand this is not just about intelligence this is about behavior this this is about a step-by-step -step, um, 
um, you know, doorway back into bondage. And it's important that we understand these things. Now, when you get to the depression stage, now you're at this point where you you just you're completely hopeless. You've lost all hope in everything. You don't you don't see you don't have any more victories. You know, you're not reading the Bible. You're not really doing anything because you have completely lost hope. Now, I have seen situations where people have allowed themselves to get to this stage and they end up uh, getting themselves in a place where now they need some type of help. So I want you uh, to listen to this testimony of, um, of a brother uh, in Christ that um, you know allowed himself to get to this place. Now, by the grace of God, he was delivered, but he actually allowed himself to get, this, get to this place and hear what happened to him. I was in a situation in life where I wasn't even supposed to be here right now talking to y'all. I was smoking weed at the age of 20. One of the friends of mine, there were people I thought that was my friends, and they laced something in it, and it triggered to where I started losing my mind. And I was in a possession in my life where I was battling demons. And I was battling possession. That was the most scariest thing I ever went through in my lifetime. I seen it in movies when people would become possessed, but I never thought in a million years I'd be one of the people experiencing that. And a lot of people would laugh and, and clown people that's on drugs and clowning, and fighting, and they don't see things, they really see stuff. And because when they smoking, they're opening their third eye, they ain't supposed to. So they seeing things in the room they ain't supposed to see. Only way that their third eye should be open by God and that's filled with the Holy Spirit and when you open it by smoking weed and doing all the other stuff you open it to a demonic a demonic portal freeing your spirit so demons can jump into your body take it from a person that used to smoke weed I smoked weed for years it's not good for you you let them demons take over your body when you hide look at yourself in the mirror what do you see that's not you Eyes all red, look all demonic. You allow no spirits to come into your body. Stop. All you're doing is let the devil take over your body. I was that person. I went to a mental institution around people that really was crazy and, I, and nothing was wrong with me. Ain't too many people that you can name that went to a mental institution and back and talk to you right now like I'm talking. I ain't nothing but the grace of God. And I'm not ashamed of it. Because I know there ain't nothing wrong with me. But I had to learn in order for me to wake up. And after that, even after that, I still did stuff. But now, at the age of 30, about to be 31 in May, I'm living right and actually telling my testimony piece by piece. So now, so now again, we talked about regression. We talked about uh, repression we talked about suppression and depression now these are these are what i call demonic influences you're not really being controlled but you are being influenced because the end game is that the enemy will get you under his control now when you are not able to pour your family members or your children or other believers are uh, out before they get past this depression stage this is now when it gets very serious because now the oppression stage which is the next stage oppression means you have come under the control of the enemy it's sort of like a fly that has gotten caught in a spider web they are aware of everything around them but now they can't get out by themselves and this is where the Bible says where the enemy has taken them captive at his will now he has them under his control now you are under the control of Satan. You're under the control of the devil. And it's, you're at this place now where you really don't want to hear anybody. You can't, it almost gets to the place where, you know, people will say, I want to pray, but I can't even pray. And why? Because they are being oppressed. Now they have come under the control of the enemy because they wouldn't listen at the other stages. Now you can't get out by yourself. Now you need help. So it goes from oppression to what I call one of the most serious stages of all, and that is obsession. Obsession is the stage where now you, you are really being deluged by the enemy. You And what is this uh, term that I put down? You are being besieged 
by the devil. That means on every turn, you are being surrounded. I mean, it's like whether you turn to your left or whether you, whether you turn to your right, you are being surrounded by the enemy. You, you can see no way out. You don't know how you're going to get out of this thing. Now you can't get out by yourself because now you, you know, everywhere that you turn, you know, it's like the walls are closing in on you. Some of you may even be going through this right now. It's sort of like the walls are closing in on you. You want to hear, you want to listen, but there's other voices that's speaking into your mind that's telling you, don't listen. And you want to come out, but now you can't because you have been entrapped. Now you've been besieged. You are surrounded by the enemy. And the only way that you can get out is through uh, deliverance. And then the last stage would be, of course, possession, where you have complete, you are gone under the complete control of the enemy. You know, um, all of your actions are being controlled by him and you can't even pray. You can't even read the word. The only way that you can get out is by help. And but I want to say this by the grace of God, there is help. There is a way that you can be delivered by the blood of Jesus and by praying saints that will come in, that will step in and take charge and take authority over that situation that you find yourself in. And I wanna say this, do not take these things lightly. This is a real phenomenon. These things really happen. You may know someone right now, or you may actually be experiencing this yourself. You know, I, I want you to recognize the signs in case this starts happening to you. You know, if you get to the place where you, you are starting to regress, you start to go back into your old uh, habits or your old behaviors, you're smoking again, you're drinking again, you're, you're, you know, you're looking at uh, programs that you know you shouldn't be looking at, you're reading magazines that you know you have no business uh, reading, you will know then that you are starting to come under the influence of demonic um, spirits. These things are trying to influence your mind to make you do things or to go back to when they had control of you. So now you need to be able to recognize this again, you know, regression and repression is when you start uh, doing the blame game. You have no more, uh, you have no sense of praise. You have no sense of worship. You don't want to read your word. You're blaming God for things he didn't do. And then suppression, you will not mention the name of Jesus. You will not talk about your salvation. You don't want people to know. Um, about, you know, your deliverance. And I mean, th these are the signs. And then depression. Depression is when you are completely hopeless. You feel that there is no way out. And I know some of you are there right now. I know you are. I can feel it by the spirit of God. I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. But listen, there is still hope for you. You, you can't give up. You have to allow the Spirit of God by other people to minister to you. And listen, if you have friends like that, don't you dare give up on them. Don't you dare give up on your children. I want to I wanna tell you again, I have five children. And every single one of them at some point were being influenced by the enemy. But I did not give up on them. They kept me on my knees. And listen, you can't give up on your family. You can't give up on your friends. You can't give up on your other believers or church members. You've got to intercede on their behalf until God, by his mercy, can pull them out. Because the Bible says they are taken captive by the devil at his will. So again, what is it? It's regression, repression, suppression, uh, depression, then obs uh, obsession, oppression, 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 then obsession, and then possession. Believers, listen, this is a serious thing that we're dealing with, but I wanted to take time to talk about this, but I wanted also, I didn't want to leave this on a bad note. I want you to know that there is help. You can be delivered. But unfortunately, once you get to that area of oppression, you need help to be taken out of the out of the claws of the devil, but devil, because now you have been caught in his web and somebody needs to be praying and delivering and, and setting free and helping you to get out of those things. Don't you give up on people. Don't you give up on God. If you find yourself going back to old behaviors, if you find yourself blaming God for things that he's not even responsible for, if you find yourself in a place where you are ashamed to give your testimony, you're ashamed to mention the name of Jesus, and then you find yourself, you know what, why am I living anyway? Isn't this what some of us say, why am I even here? What is, I mean, there? I really can see no reason to live. You, listen, know this, 
that is not you thinking that those are not your thoughts you are under the influence of the enemy but there is hope for you if you believe God God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think but he does it by the power that works in us which is his Holy Spirit. So I want to thank you again for giving me this time with you. I'm going to continue this session on next week. Next week, I'm going to talk about the 12 strongholds. You know, some of us are, are, are binding, you know, we are binding lust and that's not even a stronghold. But what is the stronghold? What are the real strongholds that are mentioned in the word of God? We're going to talk about that on next week. So again, thank you for giving me this time with you. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I look forward to talking to you again next week. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for joining Words to Inspire You with your host, Pastor John Baysmore. Words to Inspire You is a production of Restoration Christian Ministries Incorporated. Teaching the word, living by faith, growing in grace. We thank you for watching this broadcast and pray that you will continue to partner with us. We invite you to join us again for our next program as we present Words to Inspire You, a time of refreshing.